CNS took a series of interviews from 5th International Conference on Family Planning from Kigali, Rwanda. World Antibiotic Awareness Week is observed from 12 to 18 November every year that aims to increase awareness of antibiotic resistance among general public, for health workers and policy makers uh, to avoid any further emergency. Today, we are in conversation with the Public Health Crusader, Christian Mugabu, co-founder and country director of International Students Partnership for Antibiotic Resistance Education on uh, the AMR thread and how does it impact sexual and reproductive health. Mr. Christian, thanks for joining us today. Welcome to CNS Focus series of interviews. Please uh, share with us uh, what ins uh, motivated you to focus on AMR issues. Are you focusing on um, antibiotic resistance only or uh, antibiotic, antivirals and drugs that, uh, for other pathogens such as malaria? My mo motivation is quite very good. You know, I was uh, in my internship studies in my third year for PI5 fifth year. I've seen, I've seen a woman coming to the hospital many times. I never remarked because when he comes every day for such intervention with such meeting with the doctor. And later after I've seen children walking to their homes, taking their food without going with their hands. Coming back to that mother, I remarked that he, she came for many times because he, he had uh, a surgery when he's giving birth and the surgery has had some complication with with uh, the antibiotics to 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 treat that infection was not too effective she came many times until they have got the, the antibiotic which is so expensive which is of the the which is of more expensive, which, which was of the third or fourth generations of antibiotics. And uh, from that, I've seen that I have to make an impact to get people aware of antibiotic resistance, get people use the use antibiotics so correctly so that every people cannot get such problems in future. And also those children to get to get their their hands clean for everything they are going to put in their mouth so that they cannot transmit those resistant germs to the others. Could you just tell us uh, how big the MR threat is in Africa as well as in Rwanda? In Africa, I've seen that the threat of ML is increasing every year and every year because in many countries treatment failures occurs every day because of that resistance. And uh, because Africa, you know, is not financially stable and many people got that problem. So, you know, if, for example, a poor person go to the hospital and get those first generation antibiotics, not get you out of that antibiotics, it gives him or her to get more funds to get their hospital stay for their drug for their doctor services, healthcare services as well. Yeah. And in Rwanda also is among is not so far is among those low and middle income countries that face that problems every year. Yeah, and you know that this is for us in Rwanda this is the student based organization this that empires both bachelor's, master's, and PhD students around the world. We, we want to enlarge around the world. We are working with Uganda and Tanzania, with Rwanda, and our organization, the chair, is in UK, University of Manchester now. Dr. Roger Anderson is the chair of our organization. And we want to make an impact to stop this antibiotic resistance, to combat for this. Please tell us the, uh, the role uh, of uh, medical students can play in fighting the AMR. In Rwanda, you know, in many other African countries, 
medical students they get diagnosis and prescribed for antibiotics mm -hmm. and the other, the other drugs if I can say. So you know the medical students and also pharmacy student, veterinary student, students from agriculture also they can have an impact on this. Quite many for medical students they have to to obey the virtual regulations if I can say you might find a prescription that have two or more antibiotics on the same pressure. Can you imagine of that? And uh, I think it, they are in good position to to educate other healthcare providers for good prescribing practices and also to 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 collaborate with pharmacists because pharmacists are drug experts, medicine experts. They know what about antibiotics. They they have to do right diagnosis medical doctors, but also pharmacists, they have to take part during the decision of the right medicine to give to the patient as well. And I think in that case, medical student and pharmacy student and other healthcare students, plus veterinary medicine, agriculture, they have to educate also the population about this impact because there's something trending which is bad for them because they're not financially stable so they get so many diseases or conditions so easily. I think it is like the right place for them to make an impact for the community. Sometimes the studies have also shown that uh, senior doctors also uh, prescribe uh, medicines irrationally. So uh, in such a scenario, what uh, do you think, uh, I mean, how helpful it is, is to engage the um, medical students when the uh, senior um, doctors are, are also a big influencer? About this context, I'm not striking pharmaceutical industries because in many cases, they gave incentives to the doctors to prescribe such medicines for many times so that they can get the fund they invested in that medicine. But uh, apart from that, because doctors, in many cases, they, they try for, for our countries like Africa, for middle-income countries as well, they, they try many antibiotics without any evidence. I think it is the right place to, to prescribe when you have a clear antibiogram with different antibiotics as well. Yeah, and... Uh, I encourage medical doctors and other healthcare providers to don't consider those incentives from pharmaceutical companies to prescribe drug. They have to prescribe the right drug for the right condition and right disease. Antibiotic drugs have also uh, made it uh, possible the big surgeries such as um, Cesarean suction or open heart surgeries. Yeah. So, uh, could you just tell us how how big threat uh, is uh, this antibiotic to sexual and reproductive health? According to the history, people congratulated that issue that cesarean can happen because of we have antibiotic that can prevent those infections or treat those infections during cesarean process, and people were were so wow. That case, and in that time, because of this threat, global threat of antibiotic resistance, people, if if I can say, healthcare providers fear of that, because we've got such resistance. You have no tissue resistant infections, those of uh, vancomycin resistant ones, and uh, in many cases in hospitals can be transmitted so easily. If people do not consider proper infection control, prevention infection control as well. And uh, you can have all of this, but infection become resistant at that case. At this case, I think it is the right time to prevent infections for these hospitals and to prevent infections as well for this patient. We need to do much awareness for the population, for these women who's got, who, are, who are in a big uh, problem because they get cesarean, they can get for every year, for two years when they're getting back. 
and uh, I think to decrease this global burden, we want to emphasize on how we give the population the right information regarding to this global threat. And in Rwanda, this is the main, the, we are the pioneer for this initiative. We want to many people to get part of us to support us during this process because not we are not out of this low and middle income countries. We all know that uh, the um, uh, sexually transmitted diseases are also becoming uh, untreatable because of this AMR. Yeah. So could you just share some of your um, uh, your messages from this international conference on family planning ICFP 2018 to the masses? These sexually transmitted diseases are getting so complicated to treat them because of the resistance as well, as I said before. And uh, from this conference, I, need, I think, and I believe that, and I commend to this message that every people has to get a safe sex to use safe to, to use these condoms when I, I mean safe sex i mean the safe sex which not which cannot transmit those sexually transmitted disease although it can happen but it can happen at low like 0 0.0001 percent can happen in those most cases all these processes are not 100 percent but at least we can protect ourselves and our partners. And the other idea is to have one sexual partner because when you, you're going to have many of them, you will not know where's the problem. Yeah, I think this is the right message for the world at this time. Yeah. The Global um, Week Against Antibiotic uh, yeah. Resistance is uh, yeah. starting from today. So you message. My message to this week is to to use antibiotics so correctly as instructed by healthcare provider and finish them because in many cases people get they get like feel they 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 have treated when they not finish the antibiotics but when you don't finish them they. They can be antibiotic resistance. They they need to use correctly the antibiotics. The other thing is to clean hands because we know that clean hands saves lives. Is as in is it is an in our motto. Also, to help those primary, secondary, and the population to take part part of this initiative, so that. Clean hands saves lives, and we want to keep antibiotics working because, in our world, many pharmaceutical companies fear of developing new antibiotics because they will not get what they invested in that. We need to keep antibiotics working. Keep antibiotics working. Thank you so much, uh, Christian, for all these valuable thoughts. Friends, we were listening to Christian Mogabo, a co founder and country director. International Students Partnership for Antibiotic Resistance Education, ISPARE. Uh, for more information, please be welcome to visit CNS website www.citizen-news.org.